Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I am going to take you through my journey in completing one of the rarest and most valuable sets ever released for the Pokemon TCG. This is a set that despite being released 20 years ago, we didn't even know existed until 7 years ago. This is my story of the 1999 to 2000 print of Fossil. This video is going to be in two sections. The first is going to talk about the history of Fossil 2000, and then the second half is going to talk about my personal journey in collecting it. So if you already know the history, I'll put a timestamp in the description so you can jump straight to the second part. Now, I'm sure a lot of you have heard of the 1999 to 2000 print of Base Set, which changes the copyright date from 1999 to 1999 to 2000. So the same exists for Fossil. Almost. We'll go over it. So sometime between the release of Gym Heroes and Gym Challenge, a product was released that was called either the Thunderstorm Gift Box or the Tempest Gift Box, depending on what part of the world you were in. In addition to some booster packs and other goodies, it contained an exclusive theme deck that couldn't be bought separately. The theme deck was made of cards from Jungle, Fossil, Base Set 2, Team Rocket, and Gym Heroes. One of the things that's easiest to notice when looking at the deck is that the Zapdos uses the new Cosmos foiling rather than the Starlight foiling that was used when Fossil was being printed. Look a little closer, however, and you'll see that the Zapdos also contains the 1999 to 2000 copyright date, and this affected all of the other Fossil cards in the deck as well, which were a non hollow rare Raichu, Golduck, Psyduck, and Energy Search. Base Set 2, Team Rocket, and Gym Heroes were printed in the year 2000 originally, so they already had that copyright date, and the Jungle cards from the deck retained their original 1999 copyright date. So for the longest time, that was the extent of Fossil 2000 in people's eyes, just the five cards that came in this theme deck. Then all of that changed in June of 2013, when a collector named Sammy stumbled across an eBay auction for some 1999 to 2000 Fossil cards that were not cards included in that theme deck. She obviously bought them immediately and began researching them. The auction came with some rares, commons and uncommons, but no hollows, and in speaking to everyone else and getting them to search their collections and just check what they had, she found some other people who had commons, uncommons and rares, but no other hollows other than that Cosmos Zapdos that was in the theme deck. Sammy then made another discovery, red logo fossil packs. These booster packs had a new Pokemon logo that was being trialled to prevent counterfeiting, but they had another change as well, one that's a lot more important to this story. The information on the back of the packet had the copyright date updated to 1999 to 2000, and also mentioned being printed in Australia. The idea that these Australian red logo packs would contain the elusive 99 to 2000 print of Fossil made total sense. So Sammy teamed up with another collector called Charlie, and together they bought a bulk lot of these red logo packs to open and test the theory. The theory paid off. They found that all of the non holo cards within the packs contained this new and updated 99 to 2000 copyright date. The Hollows, however, retained the original 99 copyright date, which is why none had ever turned up during the research. They managed to put together a near complete non holo set, only missing three rares. They also ended up with a lot of extra copies of cards. And this is where I come in. A quick welcome back to anyone who jumped ahead straight to this point. So, because I'd expressed interest online when they were doing their research into the cards, Charlie approached me about their extras. He said that they had at least a full extra set of commons and uncommons, along with extra rares of Hitmonlee. Dragonite, Hypno, Muk, Kabutops, Magneton, and Raichu. I declined to pick up the Raichu because I already had a copy from the Thunderstorm gift box, but they sold me the rest for a very reasonable price for $100. I was then left in a position of needing 8 rares to complete my set. I needed Aerodactyl, Articuno, Ditto, Haunter, and Lapras, along with Gengar, Moltres, and Zapdos, which were the three that Charlie and Sammy also still needed to complete their set. They went in really hard on trying to find these ones that they were missing, and less than six months in they had a lead. They managed to speak to a collector in Australia who had opened a full booster box of these red logo packs, and he had the three rares that they were missing, and as luck would have it, he had the five other rares that I was missing that they already had. They worked with the seller, they made sure that they got what they needed and I got what I needed, so $75 later and I'm in the exact same position that they were six months ago, just needing Gengar, Moltres and Zapdos to finish my set. My thing at the time was, well, it took them six months, might take me a little bit longer, but hopefully not too much longer, you know, I'll just keep it public, make sure that everyone knows I'm looking, post public offers, and it shouldn't be too hard, right? The status of my Fossil 2000 collection then didn't change for three years. It wasn't for lack of trying, I was posting in forums, I was posting in Facebook groups, making sure people knew I was looking for these cards, I went out of my way to try and speak to people who were based in Australia, because they were more likely to have them. I was offering $50 each on these cards, which seemed like quite a reasonable offer, considering that I'd spent only $15 on each of the previous rares, 
And as far as I knew, I was the only person actively seeking them out at the time. But still nothing. Until April of 2017, when Charlie got in touch with me and said he knew someone who was looking to move a Fossil 2000 Moltres. The card was already graded, it was a PSA 9, and the seller wanted $200 for it. This was of course a large step up from what I'd been offering, but the chance to add another piece to this collection after so long was just way too tempting to ever let it pass by. So another $200 later, and I added the Moltres to my collection. And I was now down to just missing two cards, Gengar and Zapdos. The next two years were full of near misses. I was continuing to post on forums and in Facebook groups with the $200 that I paid for my Moltres as my new opening offer for the remaining two cards. In March of 2018, I thought I was in luck. A seller came through and had a Fossil 2000 Zapdos and was willing to let it go for $200. But it was too good to be true. After a while of messing me around, including trying to get me to pay friends and family when they didn't have any references or anything, the seller then sold the card out from under me to somebody else. It was one of those interactions where you would just bail immediately if it was a card you didn't really care about, but when it's something that you really, really want to add to your collection, you'll entertain it for longer than you should. The seller is still around today and has some references now, so maybe if I had paid the $200 friends and family back then, I would have added the Zapdos to my collection straight away. But, you know, when something doesn't feel right, it doesn't feel right, and I have absolutely no regrets about the way I handled it. Also within that time, Charlie did contact me about a couple of Gengars that are up for sale, but the sellers wanted multiple thousands of dollars for them. The price was so much higher than anything I, or as far as I knew anyone else, had paid for Fossil 2000 before. Adding into the fact that I had just moved countries, I was in no position to drop thousands of dollars on anything, so I had to decline going any further with those. I honestly wasn't expecting them to sell, but Charlie told me that a PSA 10 copy of the Gengar did indeed sell for $3,500. So after those two years of near misses, we land ourselves in May of 2019 at the Hartford Collectors event. This is an event where a lot of collectors and vendors got together, very cool event, and it was also the final weekend before me and Laura closed on our house. So our spending budget wasn't what we'd normally want it to be for an event like this, but nevertheless we went up because the event was going to be so good. At one point I was browsing through the stock of TCA Gaming, and I found some graded Fossil 2000 cards. Flipped to the back of the stack, and there I saw an ungraded Gengar. I checked the date, it was Fossil 2000. I flipped it over, and there was some pretty serious wear on the back of the card. Very far away from the pack fresh condition of the rest of my set. I was considering buying it anyway just to fill the gap in the set, and then continue looking for a mint copy a bit further down the road, but Gem Mint Pokemon talked me out of it. He basically advised me just to wait and said that the pack fresh copy I wanted would come along eventually. He was right, and I didn't have to wait that long. Two weeks later, I'm walking around Walmart with Laura, we're picking up some stuff from the new house, and I get a Facebook message from Charlie saying, which two Fossil 2000 cards did you still need? I tell him, and he asks me how committed I am to waiting on a much lower price on the Gengar. He explains that a lot of people out there are now aware of the $3,500 sale that had occurred previously, and now anyone who had one was adjusting their price accordingly. And just with so few copies even known to be out there, the chance of one coming down and matching the relatively cheaper price of the rest of the set was pretty unlikely to happen anytime soon. He also said he was asking because he was in the process of buying some items from someone's collection, and they had both the Zapdos and the Gengar that I needed. They wanted $500 for the Zapdos and $3,000 for the Gengar. Now, as I said, we were literally in the process of moving house. The timing could absolutely not be worse. We did not have $3,500 to spend on two cards. Luckily, Charlie is an amazing friend and said as long as he knew that I was interested at those prices, he would pick them up and sell them back to me once we got settled and our money situation was a little better. And once we moved in and all settled, I was able to pay for them. And a few weeks ago, January 2020, Six and a half years after I first started collecting the set, I added the final two Fossil 2000 cards to my collection. It still feels crazy to me when I just try and think of the scale of the time it took me to finish this set. When I got to the point of only needing three cards to finish my set, I hadn't even met Laura. By the time I added the Moltres to my collection, we were married and I'd moved from the UK to Ohio. <laughs> Hopefully this will go some way to showing people, especially new collectors who are just joining the hobby, that while it's not always easy to get everything, and everything's not always available right when you want it, just be patient, stick with it, and the time will come where you will be able to get the cards you are looking for. I believe I'm currently the fourth person to own a complete set of Fossil 2000, behind Sammy, Charlie, and the buyer of the $3500 Gengar. 
anyone who's looking to start the journey of becoming the fifth person, remember, just jump into some forums, jump into some Facebook groups, make some buy threads, let people know you're interested, and just be patient with it. This is a very cool set with a very, very interesting history, and it is so satisfying to complete. And hopefully if there's more awareness of the set actually existing, more people will be willing to check the copyright date on their cards, and more copies will come out for the woodwork, and let more people actually finish this set. This has probably been quite a long video at this point, so I just want to give huge thank yous and shout outs again to Sammy for doing all the initial research on this, Charlie for assisting in that research, and middling the entire set to me in one way or another over the course of seven years, and of course to Laura for putting up with me being a little obsessed with finishing this set and for, you know, spending a lot of money on it. And to any of you guys who made it this far in the video, thank you for watching, thank you for the support. Drop me some comments, let me know what you think of the set, is it one you think you'd like to go after personally? Um, do you like the history of it? Just whatever you want. And as always, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Check out some more videos right here. And don't forget to subscribe for more awesome Pokemon content from DJ Gigabyte. Gotta, Gotta catch, catch them all! all. <laughs>